What are we really after? It can't simply be boiled down to meat on the table or antlers strapped to our pack. If that were the case, why would we climb so high, endure so much, and fail so often? To the weathered public land hunter, it isn't about the kill. It's about the process. It's the beauty, the peace, and the perspective it provides. It's the pain and the fear we often face. At times, it's about reconnecting not only with people you love, but a place you love. And on occasion, it's solitude that is needed to be able to reconnect with ourselves and listen to a voice more powerful than our own. Public land. They are two simple words. And in this great nation, the concept of it is fairly easily understood. What these lands have meant to me in my life is also simple. Simple yet instrumental. I remember when I was a young boy on one of the many adventures in the field with my dad, when he explained to me what public land was, and the difference between national forest, BLM, state land, among others. The tone he spoke in was one that made it perfectly clear to me, even at a young age, that these were places of the highest regard, and places that have immeasurable value. Now, 30 years later, on yet another public land adventure with my dad, I know exactly what he was wanting me to understand. I can't imagine my life without the public lands we have in this country. A lot of what I look forward to in life involves public land. Many of my most fond memories with family were made on these lands. It's shaped my life, and I'm grateful that my dad introduced me to it all those years ago. It was a public land adventure that led me to meeting my wife. The time I have spent with my dad in these places has created a bond that I just don't think would have been possible without them. Many of these places are just so incredibly beautiful, peaceful, and inspiring that relationships grow faster and stronger when on them. Well, it's Thanksgiving Day here in Arizona. I drew a, a late season rifle tag and the season starts tomorrow. We got the gun all dialed in and we're just, uh, we've got a plan for in the morning and uh, Dana and Jim have cooked us up a turkey dinner for Thanksgiving and we're gonna have, we're gonna enjoy that here in a few minutes and, uh, and get to bed and get up early and get with it. Thank you, Lord, for many uh, blessings this year, and we're just so thankful to be here for this Thanksgiving. We just thank you for each other and all you do for us, and we just ask you to bless this food. Amen. Best meal we've had today? Best one we've had in a long time. <laughs> The Western Hunter is presented by Browning, the best there is. Swarovski Optic, see the unseen. Browning Ammunition. Canatrek Boots, for the trail less traveled. Benchmade Knives, the most advanced hunting knives ever. Wilderness Athlete, the authority on outdoor performance. 
outdoorsman's packs and tripods. Option Archery, bringing target precision to hunting camp. Matthews Archery and Goal Zero, solar power perfected. This segment is presented by Wilderness Athlete, the authority on outdoor performance nutrition. Well, we hiked out here in the dark this morning and it took a lot longer than we thought. We thought we'd kind of messed up on the morning hunt and that everything would be bedded down. And then we ran into that pack of wolves and I thought, well, there won't be any elk around here, but they're a smaller breed of wolves. We hadn't been here 10 seconds when Nate spotted two really nice bulls down over here on the other side of the hill. They're a little too far. They were bedded down, but they they got up and they're feeding down the hill. One of them is a big seven point with a crown point. The other one's just a solid six point. They're both beautiful bulls and they're both big. They got up and they're feeding down the hill and hopefully we can get, get them to within 400 yards and work down this hill and get a good shot at them if they keep coming down the hill. This is big country and I don't know if we could walk around to get to them near in time, so hopefully they'll feed down where we can get a shot from this side. Just tell me what you're gonna do so I can watch through the spot and scope. That one just bedded. Well, this one ain't no freaking hurry. No, you might as well get to where you're not getting tired. You need a jacket or anything? He's up. I got him. I'm good, just take your time, don't rush nothing. You all ready? Yep, I'm all good, whatever you want. He's on the right, lower. Once you're in trouble. You just don't want to roll once, so just kind of scooch on your butt all the way down to here. How did he wedge himself in there? He's a beautiful, heavy bull. 
long main beams, perfect six point. That was a hell of a hike to get over here though. Wouldn't want to do that again. Well, we had our uh, Thanksgiving dinner at camp yesterday and we have a lot to be thankful for. Just the opportunity to be able to hunt these animals and just uh, live in a free nation and, and be able to take one and still have the energy to do it, and especially when you get to do it with your son and, and Jim and Dana are back at camp. It's just been a way to really cap off Thanksgiving. Nate's going to come out here tomorrow and he's got to pack the quarters down to where the packer can get his horses, which is probably about a mile. We made the deal that I'd come over here with him and tag it and get it quartered up, but I don't have to come back because I only got one of these trips in me. That was enough for me. It'll be good memories when it's over. It hurts when you're doing it though. After dad was able to catch his breath and had a moment to admire the largest bull of his life, I put the camera away and got to work on quartering his elk while he rested for the long hike out that night. It took me a while to get the meat taken care of and it took a whole lot longer for dad to hike out of that rugged canyon in the dark. But as the sun started to show hints of light in the eastern sky, we eventually made it to where we started our hike over 24 hours earlier. In that short time frame with dad, I cemented incredible memories. We saw a pack of wolves at only 50 yards away, witnessed two beautiful sunrises in new country. I watched dad take his biggest bull of his life, and we hiked all night under a starlit sky. It was time I couldn't have possibly spent any better, although I'm sure dad would have been perfectly all right to have foregone the all-night hike. You ever hiked all night? How are you? Are you talking? I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I was worried about you. Your husband <laughs> drug me into hell. We left there about 9.30, started hiking. Mm -hmm. We got out at 6.30. It's horrible, man. I really wish that I was there with you. I'm sure you do. This segment was presented by Outdoorsman Backpacks. Visit Outdoorsmans.com to build your pack system today. This segment is presented by Browning Speed Killer Clothing. Well, I've been on the trail for about an hour and a half this morning. And as you can see, we got about three quarters of an inch of snow last night, which is not what I was hoping for. I've seen more wolf tracks. I've seen uh, a pair and then another single that was going the opposite direction. Kind of my mission uh, today is, is after I looked at the maps, you know, got a good feel for where that bull died. It took us all night. It's super rugged country. It's going to be hard to figure out where to get a horse to. So I got a hold of the packer, told him where it was. And we just kind of make a, made a plan that I'd go scout out today. We could probably get horses to here, but there's a lot of dead trees in the trail. And we're on top where it's kind of easy to get around stuff. I'm kind of worried about when we get down in the canyon. So I'll just keep following the trail and hope that I can find a way to get the horses reasonably close to that elk. And it'll probably be a 25 mile day, hopefully no longer. I'm just hoping I can get out before dark. I mean, I figured it was gonna be a rough day, but it's like, I can't even find remnants of a trail. So officially abandoned the trail idea on this route because I don't believe it exists. But I just stopped here to lay her down. I was starting to sweat and looked up and saw a couple bulls. My dad and I had only seen two and he shot one of the two the whole time. So kind of cool to see some more bonus bulls, you know, but I'm gonna go up and over the hill to the meet and try to find a different route out for horses, but it's still early, I got lots of time. I 
I just made it down here to a road where Dana's supposed to pick me up, so a little slight change in weather again. I think my gut instinct was right. I went up over those cliffs and that brushy country and there's no way a horse could do that. So I'm going to have to go in there tomorrow and spend all day packing meat over that cliffy stuff and just take small light loads of meat. It's a rough day and tomorrow's not going to be any nicer. Earlier today I moved the meat to a more horse friendly location, which turns out was just wishful thinking. There is no way a horse is getting in there. I had a pretty good plan with the horse packer I contacted prior to the hunt. That plan was based entirely off the trails shown on the maps, but evidently none of the trails exist after a wildfire swept through years ago. That sucks for me, but it's no secret that a big part of hunting involves overcoming obstacles, and I have a big one staring me straight in the eye. This segment was presented by Western Hunter Magazine. Visit westernhunter.net and subscribe today. This segment is presented by Benchmade Hunt, the most advanced hunting knives ever. My wife Dana and I hiked out here today. We got right above the bull here, right on the rim. The bull's only about a half mile from me right now on the GPS, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's more like five miles in my mind. The terrain between here and there is just an absolute nightmare. I've never encountered anything quite like it. Boulders all over the place, so there's just no place to put your foot down and get good footing. There's these big thorns on it that just try to rip your clothes off, scratch you to pieces. Lots of little ledges and stuff that are just completely impassable. You're constantly getting cliffed out and have to find ways around. It's just steep, rocky, brushy, miserable mess. I'd like to at least get, you know, a third of the elk out today um, to make tomorrow a little bit easier. The plan is for me to go down and make two loads up to the top. with the second load. 3.30. We should make it out by dark. Dana will take a front out with her backpack and I'm going to try to take a hind in the loose meat I got. It'll be pretty heavy load but it's not bad going back other than just slick. I don't know. I could just tumble all the way down into the truck and I'm going to be so happy to have this meat back in back of my dad's truck it's gonna be uh that's gonna be a good feeling come back in here tomorrow and get the rest of it I just made it back to the, uh, the spot here where Dana had a fire yesterday, right at the top of the canyon here. I came out by myself uh, this morning uh, early, um, and then Dad and Jim and Dana are gonna meet me here later on. But the game plan is for me to go down, start making loads up to the top here. I figure it's gonna take me about three more loads to get the rest of the elk to the top. And then hopefully by the time I do that, uh, Dad and Jim and Dana will meet me here and we can make one last final load back to the trucks and get the rest of this elk to camp. Well, 
Last load, just about to the top. I can't say I feel real good right now. That's rough. This is like the, uh, the longest short hunt I've ever been a part of. <laughs> It'll feel good to sit around the campfire tonight. It's been quite an adventure. At the time, this was yet another awesome elk hunt with my dad. But as it turns out, it would be our last. On June 11, 2017, he left this earth for what I believe is an even greater adventure. But that doesn't keep me from wishing he was still here. Elk camp will never be the same for me. But I thank God for all the time I had with him and for the father he was to me. He taught me to appreciate the hunt for the hunt itself and not to base success off a kill. He loved simple things, like the smell of juniper and sage. He loved the sound of rain falling on his tent. He appreciated the warmth of a campfire and sharing it with family and friends. He loved the journey and I am so blessed that he loved me. He leaves behind a lasting legacy and a son who loves him. <laughs>